Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. Welcome back to the show. My name's Simon Tackler. Joining me is my co-host, Neil Walters. Neil, how's it going? Still in box. Still in box. <laughs> Still, Still in box. Uh, I haven't moved. I've just been here waiting to do this podcast and just watching wrestling on TV. So that's about as productive as my life is at the moment. Well, there's been plenty of wrestling uh, over the week and there's more wrestling coming up from the WWE. Of course, they just had TakeOver in your house coming up ahead is WWE Backlash. I think they're going to be two very different shows. Um, of course, we've got the greatest wrestling match of all time to look forward to at Backlash. And before we preview Backlash and review uh, In Your House, we've got a very special guest joining us on the show. Ric Flair, the one and only nature boy, took part in a Q&A. And thanks to WWE Australia, we got to take part in that. So we'll take you to our chat right now with the man, with Ric Flair. WWE Backlash is coming up and at the show, we're going to see the main event, Edge versus Randy Orton, the greatest wrestling match of all time. Someone who knows a thing or two about having the greatest wrestling matches of all time is the nature boy, Ric Flair, the 16-time world champion, who's got some history with both men, of course. He wrestled Edge in a ladder match, with which no one would have expected. And of course, with Randy Orton, the history in evolution. Ric Flair joins us now. First question, got to ask though, rewinding it all the way back to the early 2000s. What was your first impression of Randy Orton? And could you see the potential in the early days? Well, you could tell Randy was a star of the day you met him in terms of uh, physical gifts. And, you know, Randy's got that look that comes along once in a lifetime, you know, incredibly handsome, great physique, natural, natural arrogance. I mean, it's, you know, it's who he is. It's who he's meant to be. I mean, and he, he's been that same person, um, you know, since the day he came. I mean, he, you could see right away that he was going to be a star. And uh, he brought an extremely high level of athleticism, um, you know, 6'4". 250, you know, a million dollar look. It, it just, he had money written all over him. And Rick, as we've said in the start, is you had an epic match uh, with Edge in the ladder match. Uh, what are your thoughts on Edge and memories of working with him? Well, I've always thought Edge and Christian were a great team. Um, I, I did see, um, I did see Edge, you know, breaking off sooner or later just because he seemed to be. You know, you can, it, and this is this is not a, 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 a slight to Christian at all, but you know, it, when you've been in a business as long as I have, you can tell um, when someone is is it's kind of like, and I and I don't compare it to because there was such a drastic difference, and there wasn't with Christian, but it's kind of like when Shawn Michaels did this said, you know, Shawn, we see something in you. Um, and, you know, but it doesn't include Marty and, you know, and look where Sean, look where Sean went and the same, uh, applied the edge. Um, he didn't need, um, to be a tag in a tag match scenario. He needed to be a featured star, which he was and God, I had the privilege of working with him, you know, way at the end of my career. I mean, I had a ladder, he had a match with a ladder that I was in. Does that make sense? <laughs> and, you know, I, I'll, I'll never forget that. I was like 56 years old or 58. And they called me to be in a ladder match. I said, you got to be kidding me. And I just told, as I said, you know, I, you know, I, 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 you can do anything you want to me, but I can't do anything to you because I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to kill you. <laughs> so if you're going to have me push you off the ladder. Put the ladder where you want it to be, because I have no idea where to put it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'd rather I'd rather just take the bumps and then, uh, you know, we'll figure it out after that. <laughs> but it, it, he's such a class guy. I mean, I, I, he just oozes the class. And uh, uh, Beth and he are just a tremendous couple, both of them. And I'm so happy to see them, you know, enjoying all this. Beth working with NXT and 
at the same time, Randy Orton has matured and become, you know, this, this state-of-the-art performer, you know. Um, he doesn't, he, he just, he has his own persona within himself. And to me, and I tell him this all the time, when Randy feels like it, <laughs> he is the best there is. And lately, if you've been watching his interviews, he feels like it. Because his interviews have been on fire. Monday night, classic example. They they both, their, their interviews have been fantastic. I like the way they're building this. And uh, I think Edge will die um, before he uh, lets anybody down. But I still got to go with uh, Randy. And in saying all that about the two men in the match, if you had to pick your prediction, Ric Flair's pick for the greatest wrestling match of all time, who you got? I like Randy. Um, you know, I think merely for the reason that, um, you know, Adam Edge has been off what, almost nine years or right at nine years. And I think it's increasingly difficult uh our sport as it is any other sport, but especially ours because you it's there, there's so much timing and, and the conditioning and the this is different. But running on a treadmill doesn't prepare you for wrestling thirty minutes in the ring and the, your body doesn't get hard from practicing it's you know the everyday use and uh there's a saying in our business, um that time off is your worst enemy. So until I, I feel like Edge is fully tested physically, which believe me, Ort will be all over him. It, it's um, I, I just I think Randy is uh, like is going to win the match for a number of reasons. It, it could be from physical issues to fatigue. There's just a lot. Of, there's a lot. Um, a lot of pressure. Where I think for Randy it's going to work, you know, because he's been so successful for so long, and it's for it's for Edge is trying to come back and get back uh, in that position that you were in at the highest level when you were forced to leave due to your neck injury. And Rick, you've had some of the greatest matches of all time uh, in WWE and WCW. So, who do you think has brought out the best of you in any of those matches? For me, it was Ricky Steamboat, or it was, you know, Dusty Rhodes or Sting, but that's we're going back to a different time. But with Steamboat, it was it was magic. He was, he was, he was the best good guy and will be in the rest of his career until somebody comes along that I haven't seen. And there's no one come along except Shawn Michaels when he's working on that side that's as good in the ring as Ricky Steamboat. No way. Not even close. And I, I'll put that up. I'll, you can write that down in capital letters. Good versus evil. Tear right down the middle. And that's what people like. And that's just where they are. So, um, you know, I don't care how they try to, to, to infer that the business and anything different. It's always going to be what's going to put money in the ring. It's like when Brock is out there, you know, he's a badass. You know, I'm, when my daughter's out there, there, there's the best example. There is, she is so definitively the best female wrestler of all time, whether it's because she's 5'10 and 150 pounds, you know, a collegiate dollar. I mean, just name it. There are many reasons why she is so dominant. And, and she's Brock, she's the feminine version of Brock Lesnar. She's that dominant. And, you know, the same right now would apply for Randy Orton. So for Edge, you're going back to Edge. You know, Edge was great. Can you get back and be ready for that? I, you know, I hope you can, but I, you're asking me again to give my opinion, and I'm going to go with Randy because Randy has, has never had the time off. And he's not trying to... He's not trying to get back where he was, he's going to stay, is my prediction, where he is. And that's on top right now. There you go. Very special thanks again to WWE Australia for hooking us up with the audio, with the chat, with the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. 
getting his picks and thoughts on the Backlash main event. Uh, looking back, though, we've got to take a look at In Your House, NXT TakeOver. This was a fun show. It was a very different style of TakeOver. Um, we'll just go through the card with all our thoughts. Kicking it off with the first, max, uh, first match, the six-person tag. Neil, thoughts on that one? Um, I think I was pretty spot on with, I've, like, I had a look back at the prediction. I think I got all of them right except for uh, the main event. So I was, um, yeah, I, I I pretty much agreed with everything they did on this whole card. Um, the tag match was great. I think we said it could be a, a show stealer. I don't think it was up to that kind of level, but it was definitely entertaining. Um, Miriam just continues to impress. She's, she's brilliant. Um, I'd love to see her versus Shirai pretty soon for the title, which would be, Extremely interesting. Um, yeah, I thought it was a banger to kick off the card. Yeah, and what's interesting, um, Io Shirai isn't really a face or a heel in the traditional mm. sense. So it almost feels like anyone in this match could be a challenger. And maybe that's for the best because you've got six people here who could just go into that spot, you know, main event a takeover yeah. or an episode of NXT for a women's title defense could be good. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think Candice LeRae was looking to go after her, maybe. Um, so it's, yeah, it, any any of those could be interesting. I'd love to see a War Games um, kind of match with everyone involved, um, those six, um, plus Shirai, maybe Ripley or someone like that, because it'd just be uh, interesting uh, as hell. So, yeah, I'm keen to see what happens next with all of these, all of these ladies involved in that match. Yeah, I think that's something that's definitely going to stick around. I don't think the women's war game was a one-off. I think we'll see that again this year. Oh, I think the second war games you need a crowd, a hundred percent. There's no there's zero <laughs> war games point in need, war games. You need somewhere bigger than the performance center as well. Can you put two <laughs> rings in yeah. there? Like you know, like no, back to back. no way. Now, even just with the and oh, also how stoked are you that they actually did do the house? They brought oh, the house yeah. back. Yeah, they had I the think... house. It took up so much of the stage as well. I thought that was funny and they barely had a walkway. Um, yeah. And they brought back Todd Pettingill, who did a great job throughout <laughs> the show. You always forget how good some of those guys were. You know, we make fun and of the them. Old but school man, commercials so would, the old school commercials were so ridiculous and I love them. That I just thought that was so good. Um, just having like wrestlers come in and just act corny as hell. It was yep. so good. Yeah, we were saying last week, we love all that gimmicky stuff. Bring it back. It works, you know. Mm. Do it for real. I want to see Adam Cole do a legit ad in the middle of a show for a, you know, supplement. Just why not? It's good. It's good stuff. Yeah. Um, like Especially bringing back old... I, I love the idea of bringing back old sets too. Like, imagine if they brought back the backlash with the swinging, like, pendulum the things they had. That would be so sick. Surely they've like got some them of the, in storage. Bring it back. They, they don't just get rid of that stuff. I think that warehouse is full of this kind of shit. It's like, for SmackDown now, just bring back the big fist and put it in the Performance Center. That'd be awesome. <laughs> like, this is this is the time you can deck out the Performance Center um, with all these weird and wonderful things. Yeah, well, I don't know. Like we've said, though, hopefully some of these things they've been forced to do during the lockdown, they carry over into the real shows. Give us throwback shows. Give us fun sets. Give us weird movie matches give us fake ads just bring the shows to life I think in a weird way the lockdown has forced them to inject something different into the program i like it we love weird yeah uh next up a match that could have been totally weird but ended up being for me maybe my favorite match it was just a straight up wrestling match finn bella and damian priest this was really yeah. good both of them um, just proved how, like we already knew it, but both of them proved how good they really are. Just straight up technical wrestling, wrestling without any gimmicks or anything needed, really. Um, I think if Bella had come out as a demon here, it would have it would have ruined it, um, and it was obviously wasn't necessary. Uh, Priest could then, you know, I could see them going again with this. There's no way you have something this good and then just go, okay. That's that's it for these two. Um, I'd love to see this keep going for a little while, and you know maybe Priest does like summon the demon because that's part of his kind of thing. Um, and that would like as a secondary thing that would be great now. Um, but just seeing how good they these two did just as a straight wrestling match was brilliant. 
Yeah, Priest is a weird one. He's a guy who, like, when he was on the indies, you'd hear about him, you know, Punishment Martinez, you'd see him wrestle, you'd be like, oh, this guy's pretty good. He's one of those guys who, like we said, he seems to fit better in the WWE system or whatever, you know? And, yeah. like, this match was good. I could see him on Raw SmackDown, like, main eventing pretty quick. Why wouldn't he? Yeah. You know, Absolutely. and, of course, Finn Balor being, like, rehabbed in a way on nxt just becoming invincible is it even as the real guy i think that's important too yeah that he doesn't yeah. need to be the demon he can just be finn and kill you like he just turns nah. it on and goes nuts and what's the point of bringing the demon back at the moment really at all um i think it's again it's a crowd thing the matches don't go for long it's a big it's a big gimmick that mm. um crowds just kind of respond to so without a crowd uh, i don't think we'll see the demon back anytime soon at all he yeah, I don't need to see the performance center trainees doing the no. <laughs> thing. Like, it's cool. You can relax for now. Um, mm. Then up next, a similar match in that it was, you know, big man, little man, but done in a very different style. This was a little bit more over the top, a little bit longer. Johnny Gargano, Keith Lee for the North American Championship. This was pretty good. I actually preferred Finn and Priest for whatever reason. Oh, I, I think I preferred Finn and Priest simply because it went... Uh, Keith, Keith Lee and Gorgano's match went for a little bit too long, I think. Um, I thought it was good, but they got 20 minutes. And 20 minutes is a long time on a short pay-per-view. Uh, they got longer than the main event, which is a triple threat match. So that mm. kind of says a lot. Um, but, but it's a Johnny Gargano spots, match. He's almost set us up to, you know, oh, it's going to go, go for an hours. hour. Yeah. <laughs> the, but the, the two spots, we finally got the hockey, the hockey hit yeah. through the plexiglass. That was yeah. huge. That was good. That it was, was bound such to happen. a big hit. It was obviously very set up, but oh my God, like what a hit it was. Um, and that, as a Rangers fan, that made me pop. Um, <laughs> and then the, the security doorbell. Yeah. Like on the on the front door, how Gorgano was trying to knock on the door, even though you could just go around. Yeah, and he had, didn't he get had, the, he had the key. I thought he had the key when he, you know, like it's very weird. But he's trying to get through a door that just goes to backstage, and yeah, the shed goes just there. goes to backstage. Yeah, well, that, hey, that was the house that he cut those promos on. I think that's what where they were going yeah. with it. It was very weird. He lives I, in I your house. It. Yeah, I, I thought it was great. Um, Keith Lee just looked massive. Um, but Gagano, like, he made him look... Uh, like, yeah, it, it made Johnny look really good. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, there was a lot of it. good stuff in this match. It was very good. It was yeah. just, for what it was, I don't know, it, it did feel a little bit long, but hey. 20 minutes Johnny Gargano is going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think but of I him think... as a bad guy? I've read a lot of feedback and now people are sort of not on board with it. They're like, yeah, I don't buy him as a bad guy. No, I don't, I, I don't either. Um, mm. You look at someone that makes a transition from good to bad, look at Finn Balor, perfect transition. Yeah. Because it's, he changes everything about him. With Johnny, he, doesn't, he didn't change as much. He's just now, he's just a bit of a prick to everybody. Yeah, he's still um, kind of a he, nerd dressing up as characters on his entrance and yeah. stuff. It's kind of weird. Isn't yeah, it, and, and he has the whole like, oh, please don't hurt me kind of thing. But then like does a low blow. It's like, that's not being a bad guy. Like, look how Bowler did it. And he just changed his whole demeanor, changed his outfit, changed his entrance, just was really cold to everyone. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't buy the Johnny thing as a, as a heel. I, I, I can't see it sticking around for too long either. Yeah, I think yeah. he'll. I think he'll go back. They sort of played with it a while ago. Like, was it last year or the year before when he when he had a short feud with Alistair Black, but then he became a good guy again. So it feels like it's something yeah. they've wanted to try. I guess they're just going to stick with it this time, and you know, with evil Candice LeRae with him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's she's just yeah. It's the same kind of thing. She's not a bad guy. She's just she's just a bit of a bitch to everybody that kind of like comes in the ring with her, which is. You know, cool and everything, but it doesn't. That's not a heel. A heel is someone you want to hate, not someone who just annoys you. Mildly irritating, like an annoying yeah. neighbor. That's who they are. Like, oh, they're bloody <laughs> cutting promos loudly again. Tell them to shut up. Annoying neighbor. We we'll <laughs> yeah. call the police on our heels. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Doing dramatic things in their house. Um, up next, yeah. a match that I actually thought this was going to be the main event. I didn't realize the triple threat was going on last, but it was the NXT mm. Championship. Adam Cole, Velveteen Dream in the back lot brawl. Um, I don't know. This was sort of the... Maybe this was the weakest cinematic match 
for some reason it was like it was all right it was ent- you could watch it it was entertaining look that's what our main kind of talking point was last week we said that do these cinematic matches until you find what doesn't work mm. um i think the way this was filmed was kind of weird too like it it was obviously pre-taped but it there was a lot of sections which made it look like they didn't really stop and the camera angles didn't know where to go. Um, there was like parts where they were filming kind of nothing and then it was all like, maybe that was that was the whole point of making it look like it was kind of just really guerrilla kind of filming to it. But for me, a lot of it didn't work. Like there was a whole section where Adam Cole was lit up, but then there was no lights at all on Dream and he kind of just, and even the commentators were like, oh, it's, it's incredibly dark here. You can't really see him. And it's like, he didn't like pop out of nowhere or anything. It was just, there was a camera on him, but no lights. Yeah. Like, if you're going to do cinematic, it has to look good the whole time. Like you look at the Boneyard match and at all times, you can tell every shot was really thought out. And this match didn't feel thought out. It felt thrown together in very last minute and them going, well, this is just going to be a backlot brawl whatever um we'll just wander yeah, some around of the spots just really other. didn't work yeah yeah and, and this isn't just you being a picky mark who's talking out of turn this is you talking as a <laughs> cinematographer and an expert yeah just so people it's don't like, think oh what's this guy know about lighting like yeah, yeah. it's every every shot if you're going to do something cinematic which is you can pause and you can redo things um it has to it has to make me believe that it's it's in one go Mm. this whole thing you could kind of you can even tell you go ah there was a stop there um or the lights weren't right there and so yeah it it just it felt a little bit um i felt a little bit incomplete yeah and i gotta say like like we mentioned last week, they sort of teased Velveteen Dream talking into the mirror and like summoning the ghost of Prince. And like they were leaning yeah. into that side of per- his personality. But then he came out cosplaying as Negan from The Walking Dead, which was <laughs> so at, like, yeah. I know Velveteen Dream dresses up as characters, you know, at the takeovers, but, but that one was sense. so weird. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't make any sense. And if you're going to do a Walking Dead character, like you come out with a baseball bat come out with a baseball bat with nails in it or uh, put, like light it on fire. or well, like, it does dude, have nails in it in the show. He could have wrapped it in barbed yeah. wire or something. Yeah, put nails in it. You're not going to hit him with it. They don't have to be real nails. Like, I don't think is, he even is, used the bat. No, nah, like I think he went to use it once, but the, like there was nothing to it. So yeah, I, I thought it was pretty, pretty disappointing. Um, but you know, NXT, I think this might be their first cinematic match. Well, they, they kind of did the one with Gargano and Champa, the the final oh, yeah. beat or whatever, which was, I don't know, maybe these don't work in NXT because, you know, I didn't love that one because that, that one they, although to be fair, they tried something completely different. You know, it went yeah. a whole hour. It was in that warehouse and, you know, they took a punt. It was like Gargano and Champa, no crowd, an hour in a room with a ring. But yeah, I don't know. I think they're trying to get too gritty with these NXT ones. Yeah. They're not getting as silly and maybe that's working against them. You can't just well, have with, a dark lit parking lot. Exactly. And you've got to look at how cinematic matches in WWE work so well because the thing that WWE does so well is storytelling. The, the storytelling is always there. It's not always even about the wrestling. Um, but with NXT, it's about the wrestling and storylines come secondary. Mm. So, because you, you could watch a takeover and you could just start watching it without knowing what any of the backstory is and you'd have a good time. But with a like Backlash, for example, you need to know why Edge and Randy Orton hate each other here. Um, so it's just, yeah, I think a cinematic match needs a really good story behind it and you need to be able to tell that within the story. And I didn't get that at all from Cole and Dream in this one. Yeah, and also Cole just winning and Dream not getting another title match against Cole. That's kind of, yeah, I think we sort of predicted that, but we'll see where they go with Cole. I think they dropped some hints this week uh, on NXT. It looks like Dream is just going to, you know, take a break from the main events again and do something else. Yeah, it's maybe it's he's gonna, weird. He might team up with Dexter Loomis and maybe feud with the other guys from Undisputed Era, which could be fun. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's that, Dexter's Dexter's character is so weird that he's just playing Dexter, <laughs> like he's just playing the TV show Dexter Dexter. Yeah, yeah, and I like, think um, uh, Moro dropped a hint of that, show. like he made a reference to the show. It's like he can't do that. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of no, weird. You're not allowed to play. You're not allowed to be a character playing another character on a TV show. It doesn't well, work like that. You can just don't reference it. That makes it weirder. That would be <laughs> like if when Hulk Hogan was hulking up. The commentator was like, just like Bruce Banner, he's hulking up. It's like, well, now you're just telling us he's ripping it off. We get it. Don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he, he pretty much said, Dexter is Dexter. Yeah. He's like, he's putting him in the trunk, like on the TV show. It's like, uh, what? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of like his, what he does with it. And I think him and Dream being friends could be fun. You know, if they yeah. want to get really weird with it, I think this is their chance. Well, Dream's at his best when he's at his weirdest, so yeah, I'd like to see it. Yeah, they can push the boundaries there. But I think the next match was a hint at where they could be going uh, with Adam Cole in the future. And the main event scene is something I called for when he debuted. Karrion Cross, Tommaso Ciampa. Karrion Cross just wrecked him. Not as quickly as we predicted, but it was basically a squash match. Well, the shortest match of the night by like by four minutes, I think it was roughly. And that was like, it was a six minute match. And on a, on a card with a second match on that is nearly 10 minutes. That's, mm. it's, I'd, I'd nearly call this a squash match. Um, yeah, Cross just looks huge. Absolutely huge. Um, if, he, if he's not the next one up for Cole, then I don't know what they're doing with him. Um, I could see, yeah, Cross, Cross winning it. Um, and then maybe Scarlett coming in and winning against Shirai. And then you've got a, your first um, kind of ta- tagged up or tag team with, with both uh, titles on there. That could be that could be really good. Yeah, um, I think um, Gargano and Candice LeRae, you know, hinted that they were going to try and do that. Wasn't that sort of the thing? And then you've got mm. um, Keith Lee and Mia Yim. And then you, you'd have Cross and Scarlett. Maybe that's yeah, where they're you going. Have a, Couples. Maybe you have a, a big war games match where the winner gets both titles. And it's like all the would couples. Be, that would be oh, huge. Oh. Yeah. Or like a, a triple threat tag team intergendered ladder match for both titles. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's this, this is the kind of shit we need to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, what can you say about this? It was great. It was what it needed to be. I think Karrion Cross could be the champ. And maybe that's the end of Cole's reign because, my God, it's been a long reign. And Karrion Cross being champ would, would sort of change NXT. Like, the vibe for a while has been, you know, small guy who has these one-hour-long matches. Change it up. Mm. Have a guy who's, yeah, like, impossible to beat. NXT is all heavy metal. Like, um, like you've got Slipknot as their theme song. It's It's very, like, hardcore kind of vibe to it have a dude that's clearly like looks like he could be the front man of a hardcore band. It just destroys everyone as, as your main dude for a while. Yeah. We haven't had that for ages. So um, Alistair Black was the last dude that kind of looked like that um, mm. in NXT really. So play this up, um, get it going. Like it's, it's yeah, it's the only way to go really. Yeah. I, I, Cole needs to lose a title because it's starting to get old. Yeah, and there have been rumours about Adam Cole. You know, his contract is up in August. There's been talk. Will he hang around? Will he get called up? Will he stay on NXT or will he jump to AEW? I think it, that could just be a bargaining chip. You know, oh, I could I mean, go to AEW. Going anywhere. Yeah, I know no he's going to AEW. People are saying, oh, his girlfriend's there, Britt Baker. But he's in such a, you know, he's in seemingly good standing. Like Triple H and Shawn Michaels only say amazing things about Adam Cole. It'd be ridiculous for him to jump ship. I don't think AEW would be able to afford him for starters. He is like, he's NXT's main player and he'd be getting the most money out of anyone on that brand. Um, he's, a, he's a huge heel and everybody in the crowd, when there is crowds, just love him. Mm. So Where would he fit would you... on the main, on Raw Smackdown though? Drew McIntyre and I... Braun Strowman are these giant champions. Adam Cole is not a Adam giant Cole's... man. I don't think he should. He, there's no point taking him up to uh, Raw or SmackDown. And NXT is only getting more popular. So um, what's the point the of having chip? him on? 
yeah, there's he'd fit you in their like intercontinental title or US title. And like, who wants to go from being NXT champion to um, like the United States champion? It just doesn't like what's that, that's that's not a that's not an up, that's a sideways. So, well, um, yeah, I think cross beating him could finally. Cole's been in NXT for a while. Maybe you swap him. Maybe you let the crowd cheer him. They all cheer Adam Cole anyway. Why mm. don't we see what Cole can do on the other side as a face? Yeah, yeah, why not? As soon as he drops the title, he could go away for a month, come back, and then, um, you know, maybe he splits with his little group. Yeah. And that's, um, you know, he, he, he could have a feud with, um, you know, he could have Finn Balor versus Adam Cole. Like, that. that kind of stuff is... Um, could be sick. Like, why don't we just go for that? And or you could have, um, uh, yeah, you could have Keith Lee versus Adam Cole, something like that. Like, it's yeah, definitely something that's not the title because that's it's run its course for sure. Yeah, there's plenty for him to do. Yeah, I, I imagine he sticks around in NXT for a while, just like Gargano and Champa. You know, they were the main event a while ago. They didn't magically just end up on Raw or SmackDown. I think they teased that, and then they thought, you know what, they're better off you know, carrying NXT on yeah. USA and, you know, every other channel it's on now. Um, getting to the main event, though, the triple threat for the Women's Championship, Charlotte Flair, Rhea Ripley, Io Shirai, very good match. Great match, but who the hell picked this? Yeah, I didn't think Shirai like, would win. I don't think anybody had Shirai down as a winner for this. Like, no way. She just... You, uh, it was either Flair or Ripley gets it again. Um, it's great. Like, I... Yeah, I love it. I think she she, she definitely deserves it. Um, but what do you do with like Flair's just gone back to Raw now? It looks like um, yep. after after Raw this week, it looks like she's just completely completely bailed on NXT and just gone back to Raw and now is teaming up with Oscar. Like, um, which it's I guess incredibly weird. I feel like um, with Becky Lynch obviously having to take time off for the pregnancy. That probably took them by surprise. They thought, okay, we're going to have to shift plans here. We'll move Charlotte into that role. Like, it feels like they were going to do the Becky and Asuka team up. Like, this is what that was. Plug Charlotte in there. Charlotte can do it, you know. And it's going to lead to more Asuka and Charlotte, which they always have great matches. Well, at the moment, they're they're your two... They're your two key players, uh, really. Yeah. Like it's it's not anyone else. So so why not um, why not play it that, that way? Uh, yeah, we've always got that to talk about with backlash. But I I think yeah, Shirai's great, and now she could go on. Uh, her and Ripley could have some matches together. I think mm-hmm. uh, I don't think Ripley's done for the, to the title picture just yet. And getting Charlotte out of the way for that, um, you know, maybe Ripley it's Ripley versus Shirai one on one kind of attitude, or maybe Ripley is done for a while now for the title and she she maybe she goes to SmackDown or Raw or somewhere like that. Um, yeah, who knows? Yeah, but it was a great way to end the show with a just full-on triple threat. We saw Io Shirai jump off the roof of the house. That was cool. Mm-hmm. That was yeah. a big pop. Yeah, that was good. And then she had the, you know, massive celebration because they've sort it's felt sort of stop start with Shirai for a little bit, but now it's like, nah, she's the top of the division and, you know, can main event a show. We're going to get so many good matches there, as we said, with the rest of the women's division. Uh, It was a great show, but WWE, it never stops. We've got another, you know, network special coming up and that's Backlash. I don't know if it's going to reach the heights of TakeOver, but hey, I'm going to keep my hopes up, you know. I'm not going to ride it out off the bat. Yeah, um, it has some bangers on there, but it's it's again, it's a lot of singles matches with not a lot of stipulation. Like it's, um, it has the opportunity. It has unfortunately the opportunity for everything to kind of blend together and feel um, unnecessary. Like there are quite a few title matches, but there are a lot of singles matches on there. Mm-hmm. Um, and you go from uh, in your house, which just was a like a few gimmicks, a few like awesome matches into into backlash which can notoriously feel like a bit of a um you know who knows what what could happen some of the matches are teamed up to piss a lot of people off um <laughs> there are some matches on here which if it goes the wrong way you go oh, i'm not watching anymore like yeah could be it could be really really weird which i guess we're going to talk about yeah well we'll get to it sheamus versus jeff hardy this one's been added to the card 
it's weird. It feels like a retread or a throwback, but honestly, I can't remember them ever having a match on pay-per-view, but it feels like they have. Well, it probably feels like a retread because they did it like three weeks ago on SmackDown and Hardy actually smashed Sheamus. So I don't <laughs> see the point of doing this again. Like, it's I, I understand the storyline, but it's... You, if Sheamus beats Hardy here, why and how? If Hardy demolished him multiple times already, why are we just going back for it unless it's going to be a shoddy finish, which that's exactly what I think is going to happen. Sheamus is going to win here somehow. That's not legal. Uh, and that'll just set up another match for them, which you're like, I, I want to see Hardy go on here and take on Edge or someone like that. I don't want to see him stuck with Sheamus for six pay-per-views. That's what we're going to get, though. Yeah, I don't, know, exactly I don't know where these guys fit anymore. It almost feels like there needs to be a sort of legends division. Yeah. Because Sheamus and Jeff Hardy, I, I, does anyone really want them to fight Braun Strowman? We don't really want to see them go further down the card. Like they're both good and they're both still really good, but they don't, yeah. it just doesn't feel like they fit anymore. So, no, not at all. Yeah, it's kind of a weird one. Then, speaking of the future, though, this is a match that it's good to see on a pay-per-view for the US title, Apollo Crews versus Andrade. Huge match. Um, this is another one that has... I I really hope they don't do a pre-show because this is... If, if they do a pre-show, this is going to be on the pre-show. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, uh, which it's sitting seventh on the card at the moment, so it's not going to open the show, and yeah, it does have that possibility, but... Um, I hope they just add another match last minute that goes pre-show. I love that they're giving Cruz a chance here. They've given him the title and gone, all right, we'll see what you can do. You've obviously a little, little bit of traction on the internet at the moment. So mm. let's go. And um, yeah, this has the chance to be a, a show stealer. We know, we know Andrade is great in every match that he, that he does. So this could have the potential to, um, to pop right off. Yeah, Andrade's awesome. Apollo Crews feels like he's in the spot Buddy Murphy was with the Cruiserweight title, where mm. for those few months in a row, he was having like the best match just sort of underneath or on the pre-show. And then people eventually took notice. Hopefully Apollo Crews can get more traction because he's a great athlete. Yeah. And we know, you know, he's always going to have a good match, especially on this stage now, which is nice. Um, we've got the Women's Tag Team Championships. Bailey and Sasha, Nikki Cross and Bliss, and the Iconics. Who's your pick? We Iconics. just got a title change, yes. though. That's what I'm sus about, you know? I, uh, I think the Iconics are going to win it. I really do. I think that they're going to pin um, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross or something like that, and this is going to break up Sasha and Bailey. This will be well. it. Um, it'll, it'll cost, like, Bailey or Sasha will cost... Um, them the match or something and I think this is the beginning of the end they didn't stick these titles on them to hold that I know there was just a change mm. but this isn't giving them the titles to hold it for a long period of time the last time that Bailey and Sasha lost these titles to the Iconics we lost Sasha Banks for six months or whatever else because she just went bugger this I'm over it I'm, I'm going um so why why not just do it again yeah, that's true. And this time they can play up on it because they sort of did that. They turned that into the story as well. Hmm. They can show, you yeah, know, Sasha, Sasha walks Bailey. away. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, she walks she... away and then Bailey comes out and goes, Sasha's just, she cost me the match. She cost me the title. Um, she's just walked away like she always does. And that just sets up the feud then for Bailey versus Sasha at whatever pay per views next. SummerSlam eventually or whatever. Yeah, you'd think it'd be SummerSlam. Um, it's definitely building to this. But yeah, uh, given the Iconics, the belts, I'd, I'm all about it, obviously. Yeah, they're so much fun. Give it back to them. Let them do their thing. And I think if anyone should have been shining in the quarantine era, surely it's the Iconics because they can just do backstage segments and make fun of people. Yeah, everything. Look at when they had the titles. Some of the best content that the WWE was putting out was them just bragging about having the titles. Yeah. It was so funny. It was so good. Um, yeah, why not give it back to them? Give them a cinematic match. Yeah. You know? It'd it'd be make so it super stupid, Aussie so gimmicked and really dumb. I think it'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, that could be good. Uh, what else do we have? The Raw Women's Championship, Asuka versus Nia Jax. Surely Asuka just wins. Now, we need to discuss Nia Jax. So Nia Jax is terrible. Right? <laughs> she continuously injures people and it's starting to get to the point where you're like, I thought it was a work, but it's not. She like, she's 
she needs to go back to NXT or something because she's injuring wrestlers. Everything that she's doing, like she came out and cut this promo with Oscar where she was saying that she got gifted the title. Mm. She won it in a ladder match. Yeah. Like, are they, is she forgetting that she beat like seven other women and beat everyone else and won it in a ladder match? It, what she, it's not like someone just gave her the title. She won it. So everything that Nia Jax is coming out and saying is just like, you're an idiot. But like, I think what, they're what playing saying? into that. They're making it, they, they really want you to hate her. Yeah, it's, she's, it's just, she's a really interesting kind of heel where she is doing a really good job making me hate her. Mm. But it's just to the point where you're like, um, it's a Corbin kind of hate where you're like, I don't like watching you and I'm going to switch off. It's not a, I don't like watching you. I hope you get beat. Yeah, I don't know. I enjoy her matches. I know all the criticism, oh, she's hurt people. Well, I'm not a wrestler. I don't know how rough she really is. But her mm. matches are usually, like, especially with someone like Asuka, this will probably be good, you know? Espe- I, as I, I long as Asuka wins. Gonna win. I think Asuka's going to win, and they move on to Charlotte and Asuka. Mm. But then I what do you I, do with Nia Jax after? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think Nia Jax will always just be in the role where she pops up every now and then to challenge and not win. Except yeah. the one time I, she won when she was a face. But that was a different story, you know. I'd, I'd like to see Tamina come back and just do Nia Jax, Tamina versus the Iconics or something for the titles where the Iconics just continuously run around them and don't, don't ever actually give them the match. That, that is interesting to me. Yeah, I guess they could do that. Because weren't Nia and Tamina a team for a little bit? I feel like they always go on and off. Yeah. Yeah, for that, the Elimination Chamber where they yeah, were. Right. Um, they were in that and everybody just tried so hard to beat them. So, yeah, I, I think that that that's a good setup for Nia Jax because you've got someone else to um, bounce off and work with that's not just people just hating you. You're hating a tag team, which is much easier to do. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't think too much about this match. I think Asuka wins. She's not going to lose the title that quick. Um, I hope so. The Universal title, this is a weird one. Two on one, it's Braun Strowman versus Miz and Morrison. Um, this is just a setup for The Fiend to come back. I, I can't see this match lasting any more than 10 minutes. The Fiend's coming back. It's, this is very, very obvious. It's what are you going to have the Miz win the title? Yeah. Um, and then Mo- Morrison just, well, it, it, yeah, they haven't set it up right. This is just, uh, I'm tipping six minutes in, The Fiend, the Fiend comes in. Uh, all the puppets start popping up and such. Uh, and then, yeah, the Fiend comes in and absolutely destroys all three of them. And that sets up for SummerSlam versus Braun versus the Fiend, where we finally get the Fiend with his belt back. I, I like the idea of the Fiend using this match to get Braun Strowman on side. He helps Braun win and says, mm. I saved you. You know, we're still yeah. family. But Braun can say, you know, oh, no, I had the match won. I didn't need your help. And Bray mm. can be like, sure, you didn't. Yeah. You know? Or, or I, I'm, I'm tipping just a demolishment of just walking in and just going, flattening everyone, just Sister Abigail's um, everywhere. So I, I hope so, because I, I just... Now, after what Braun um, did on that last day for you, I really want to see um, The Fiend just go full ham at him and just destroy everyone. Yeah. Either way, I think they're going to tell another good story here, even though it feels weird on yeah. paper. I. Yeah, I'm expecting something from that one. Um, on the flip side, for the Raw, for the uh, WWE Championship match, Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, I'm expecting a really good match here. If anyone didn't yeah. see their matches in Impact, which I imagine is most people, because who watched Impact <laughs> in those years especially, I remember seeing one of them, Drew McIntyre and Lashley, had a yeah good chemistry, and I think they're going to show it here. Drew McIntyre, when he respects another big dude has a great match. He does. Um, his match with Brock was great. Like it's, it's always, it, it's whenever you put Drew against a small dude who doesn't look like he can take on Drew McIntyre, it feels a little bit weird. Um, so yeah, him against Bobby, I think this is a perfect opportunity for Bobby to flex his muscles and look really, really good. Um, I hope there's no Lana coming in and like ruining it for him. I really hope that it's just Drew versus Bobby and Bobby loses. Um, but he, it's a 20 minute epic kind of match. Mm. Yeah, we might get shenanigans though. I'm expecting MVP and Lana and everyone, but this feels like the next step for Lashley, which is weird to say because he's been around for so long, so many times. 
But yeah, if there's ever a time to just go full on with Lashley, this is it. And I think he's doing good. I like the master lock or whatever they're calling it. Um, just yeah. full Nelson going old school. He looks very, very scary, as does Drew. So this feels like an old school main event. These two giant, yeah. unrealistically huge dudes fighting for the world <laughs> title. You know, Drew, Drew wins, no doubt. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to see this just go, go all the way. Yeah. Um, and I know Lashley is still pushing for his match with Lesnar. Hey, if they're doing this with his character, this is how you do it. Establish him as this, you know, freak. Yeah. Um, might even see, you know, you could have Brock, Brock come back um, in this kind of atmosphere. But I think Brock said he's not coming back until there's people again. Yeah. And he's not, um, he's not coming, you know, he lives in Canada. I don't think he's going to travel yeah. across lines just to show up, you know, one of these shows. Yeah, I think he shows up at if we're, you know Hell in a Cell or somewhere like that again, where it's you, no one expects him to come back. Hmm. Yeah, um, and then I guess surely what's the main event? Edge, Randy Orton, greatest wrestling match ever. I don't know what to think. I don't know what what the hell's going to happen. I'd think Orton because Edge going two for two against him doesn't really make any sense, and then you set up a third match at SummerSlam again. Um, you know, yeah, I, it could go either way. It could be screwy. Like the fact that they're calling it the greatest wrestling match over and over again. You're like, well, what happens if it's not? What happens if they have a really, really average match? Obviously it's pre-taped. So they're going to make it the best wrestling match ever. But I don't see the point in calling it this unless it's a stipulation match or anything to it. I think it's it's going to go for half an hour at least. I think it's going to be a long match. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I can't see Edge winning it. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but then the finality of a last man standing and then the greatest match ever, what tops those two things? There will uh, be a third yeah. match, but what on earth is more final than those two things? Ladder match? Yeah, say, they, they used the ladder. ladder. They already, you know, they used the ladder, so it makes it hard. Yeah, do you do a Hell in a Cell um, match? Like, that would be Hell in a Cell at... Oh, you can't do it at SummerSlam because you've got Hell in a Cell pay Because of Hell um, in a Cell. Uh, yeah, you can't do a cage match. Like, it just doesn't... Yeah, a no disqualification, street fight kind of thing. That it, Maybe, That's a last man standing match, really. Maybe they just go one for one and that's it. I, I hope so. I, I all, I, what I want is I want Edge to win it and then that's it. Mm. Um, there's no dispute. And then we get Jeff Hardy versus Edge or what I think we, was, and I've said this a few times now, Christian versus Edge. Because last week on Raw, there was, it kind of set that up a little bit. I could see Christian running in on this match and ruining it. And then you get, Edge versus Christian, which would just, I, I want that so much. Because we haven't had that in a very, very long time. But we and know Christian, always- or, you know, so we've heard Christian will never be cleared. Yeah, never be cleared. Even though That's- Daniel Bryan was. And Edge was. Like, it's, you know, and by reports, Paige too might be coming back. Like, oh, really? I just- haven't heard that. Okay. Yeah, well, she was she was meant to come back at Royal Rumble, apparently. So, really? you know, we never know what's going to happen. Um, yeah, who knows? It's they always rule everyone out until uh, it's. It seems like it's forever isn't a thing in wrestling, really. So, um, I'd love to see Edge versus Christian uh, down the line, maybe as his last match. That would well, be that'd be brilliant. I don't think these guys have the best chemistry with each other. All three of them. Maybe mm. if you blew it off in a triple threat match, I'd argue they could have the best triple threat match. In See, here's the thing. If Christian was in this match and they were billing it as the greatest triple threat match of all time, I'd believe it because those three guys, for some reason, work so well with each other in a triple threat. I feel well, like put, it would click. You put Jeff Hardy in there and do the greatest fatal four-way ever. Like, <laughs> Just keep that would be so it. sick. Imagine like Christian versus Edge versus Orton versus Hardy. Yeah, they've all four got the history. Biggest, oh, four of the best names ever. Yeah, I don't know. This is a weird one. It I'm is, interested I, to see what yeah. they do. My head says Orton, but my heart says Edge. So I hope it's Edge so we can just stop yeah. it. 
I'm happy to see Edge in a normal wrestling match, though. Like, if yeah. they are legit going to do this as a long match and try and have a good match, I want to see what Edge can still do. Yeah, and then, look, maybe what, maybe what this is leading to is, say we get Braun versus The Fiend, um, then, you know, do we, do we then look at The Fiend versus Edge? That could be cool. Um, Edge to smack the down. Fiend, yeah, because well, Edge isn't really tied to Raw. He's just on Raw now because of Orton. But yeah. imagine The Fiend versus Edge where... Um, the Fiend just starts to pick apart Edge um, and do some seriously hectic kind of things to him. Um, that could be that could that could be cool. I well, yeah, see if McIntyre anyone could do Edge. that, I feel like Edge could do that with all of his acting experience. I feel like him and the Fiend would do a lot of good stuff. Yeah, McIntyre then, versus Edge doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It could be good. Um, yeah, it could yeah, be actually. Good. Edge on SmackDown feels good because he could, you know, do something with AJ finally, something with Daniel Bryan, which yeah. never happened. That could be a lot of fun. You know, Edge and Wyatt, as you said, do something with Morrison and Miz. I'm sure that would be entertaining as well. Like, yeah, there's, maybe there's Edge, so Edge on SmackDown is the move. Yeah, I, I just want to see him do something cool. Like, it just, I, I don't want to see him just fight Orton for six months and then he does nothing until WrestleMania next year. Like, it, that, it's such a waste. If you're going to spend so long waiting to come back and then be ripped and in huge shape, like, do something awesome. Yeah. Well, we'll see. He's going to have the greatest wrestling match of all time, so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so scared. Mm. Scared. <laughs> genuinely but... scared. It could be terrible. I'll stay optimistic. I, there's got to be some sort of thing we're not expecting. Yeah. This might be more cinematic okay. than we think, too. They, they might be adding some bullshit to it. Oh, there's definitely going to be bullshit, but yeah. who knows? Yeah. Well, you know what? We'll see how bullshit, and we will look back <laughs> on the bullshit next week and review Backlash, or Backlashly, as a lot of people are rightfully calling ah, it. Ah, very good. Very yeah. Good. <laughs> I, they should have done that. You know how, like, the graphic for Edge and Orton is the, the greatest match ever for the Lashley match? It should have said Backlashly. Back lastly, it's just that's what the pay per view should be called. Oh, and he uses the full Nelson, which he comes from behind. The move should be the back Lashley. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. See, we need to be writing for these people. Yeah. <laughs> Feel free to take that, Tom Phillips or whoever's commentating. <laughs> um, yeah. On that note, we're going to get out of here. We're going to look forward to backlash. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, see how it all unfolds in next week's show. Neil, speed bump as always. Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.